Okay, we're going to sketch this. So we're going to have a long list of things to check for. First of all, my domain. You don't always have to check for your domain. But since this is a polynomial, can we plug any number we want into it? So our domain is all real numbers, since it's a polynomial. So will there be any vertical asymptotes? Will there be any holes? No. It's a cubic. So we could also have a clue what it kind of will look like. OK. So domain, right? range, we're not going to worry about the range. This is kind of, we don't know what it looks like. It doesn't have any funkiness to its range. We're not going to worry about that. Now, let's find the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, what do you do? To find the x-intercept, you plug 0 in for y. And when you do that, you go, oh, crud. I can't do that without a calculator. So you go, hmm, let's look at our calculator. Handy in a little calculator, went and told me it's negative 1 and 2. Okay, so what does that mean? My x-intercepts are negative 1, comma, 0, and 2, comma, 0. How do you find your y-intercepts? You do y equals 0, you plug 0 for x. And what does it look like you're getting? You get negative 2. So it's 0, negative 2. So could we go put this on our graph? Yeah. 0, negative 2? Yes. And negative 1, 0? And 2, 0? We now have a handful of nice, pretty points that were somewhat easy to find. In order to make a graph, you need at least one point to reference it. Okay. Next, we said there's no vertical asymptotes because there's no fraction. So would there be any horizontal asymptotes? Not really because there's no fractions. Now, could I take the limit as it approaches infinity and negative infinity to find out the in characteristics? Yes, but I'm not really important. I think we'll figure that out later. But you could. And that is important to find those in characteristics sometimes. We could do the limit as you go to infinity and negative infinity. OK. So next then is we don't have to worry about, let's just label it. We have no vertical asymptotes and no horizontal asymptotes. Just to label those. The reason, again, there's no fractions and horizontal asymptotes, there aren't going to be any of those because you just can kind of think about a cubic isn't going to have one. Okay. So, next step is extrema and points of inflections. To find extrema, you need to find your first derivative. So we want to find y prime y prime is going to be 3x squared minus 3. And to get our second derivative, which relates to the points of inflections, what's our second derivative going to be? Simply 6x. So let's focus on our critical numbers. Our critical numbers deal with the first derivative. So to find critical numbers, which are where we have maxes and mins, to find critical numbers, we're going to set 3x squared minus 3 equal to 0. When you do that, you get x squared equals 1. So you get x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 is 
one. So those are your critical numbers. Okay, we added the three over, divide by three, square root of both sides, plus or minus one. How do you find out possible points of inflections? Remember, these are possible points of inflections. What do we do? You do the second derivative equal to zero, and you get x equals zero. All right, so possible point of inflections are at zero. Possible maxes or mins are at one and negative one. So now we're going to find those, and we're going to create a table to, to find those, because our table will tell us a lot about the characteristics of the graph. Here's how our table works. Using these critical values, we're going to make a table. And we're going to start off going from negative infinity. And what's our first point that's important? Negative 1. Then what's different is we're actually going to plug in negative 1. There's an importance behind that for this kind of table. And then we go from negative 1 to what? What's our next important point? 0. And then we have x equals 0. And then we have from 0 to 1. And then we have x equals 1. And then we have from 1 to infinity. Okay. Now, from there, what we're going to do is, we're not done with our table. Do we have all our intervals? Do we have all our values? This is going to be f of x. Now, is this an f of x? No. But f of x just means the original equation. Then we want the derivative. Then we want the second derivative. And then we want what we call characteristics. We're going to talk about the characteristics from what we learned. Now, for this interval, I don't care what I plug in. So honestly, I don't care what goes here. On the intervals, all we care about are the derivatives. So choose a value in this interval and plug it in the derivative, which is right there. Let's plug in negative 2. When you plug in negative 2, is it going to be positive or negative? You plug in negative 2, won't it be positive? Yes. So negative 2 will be positive. And the second derivative, which is 6x, when you plug in negative 2 to here, what do you get? Negative. OK, we're just going to do the table, then we'll talk about the characteristics after. Now, let's plug in negative 1. So when we plug in negative 1 to f of x, or the function, when you plug in negative 1, you get negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 minus 2. It looks like we have 1 plus 3, which is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2? No. no. Negative 1. Ooh. Negative 1 plus 3. Is that 0? We get zero. Now, what should our first derivative be if that was a critical number? Can we just what's negative one going to do when you plug it in here? Zero. Isn't it going to be zero? Because isn't it a critical number? Yeah. I mean, you should know that. And second derivative wise, when you plug negative one in the second derivative, do you get negative? Yeah. Which won't that tell me the second derivative test? Kind of annoying, you had to put a, flat, a fraction in. Negative one half, probably. When you plug in negative one half, again, into the first derivative, if you plug in negative one half in, wouldn't that become like one fourth? Yeah. Wouldn't that become like three fourths? So, wouldn't that be minus? 